You are listening to G-Pods by Gaurav Aswani. And your video starts in 3, 2, 1. Hi friends, a warm good evening and welcome once again for this session on the books of Chanakya. And we have already completed quite a number of books and today we are going to actually complete our sixth book. So this is Radha Krishnan Pillai starting off with our next book in this particular series. And the, today we are going to cover up this particular book which is Chanakya in daily life. Yes, the session is going to be on this book Chanakya and daily life. So as we start every particular session, today also we are going to start with a prayer. So kindly join me mentally. And our prayer has already been explained in the previous uh, sessions. It's going to be on the great teachers of Chanakya and also each one of you requested to remember your teachers. Om Nama Shukra Brahaspati Bhyam. Om Nama Shukra Brahaspati Bhyam. We give salutations to the great teachers Shukracharya and Brahaspati. There are many other teachers also that Chanakya invokes in the Artha Shastra, some of them being Manu, some of them being Shandilya, Bhishmacharya, and various other uh, teachers who taught Rajaniti. We cannot, of course, cover all of them. Chanakya symbolically talks about two great teachers to begin with, that is Shukracharya and Brahaspati. So I request all of you to kindly remember your teachers and start today's session. The sixth session, that is Chanakya in daily life, is the book. For that, a quick recollection what we have done till now. For all those people who have actually joined us late or maybe attending this one for the first time, this is a 14-day, 14 events that we do. In 14 days, 14 books we are covering. I have written quite a number of books and each day we will be covering one book. And as all of you know, all my books are on Chanakya and every day one book of Chanakya. The first one we covered was Corporate Chanakya, the most famous book of mine. And then the second one was actually Chanakya, Seven Secrets of Leadership. The third one was Chanakya in you. Fourth one was Tatha Chanakya. Fifth one was Das Pop Chanakya, which we did yesterday. And today, we are going to actually start with our next book, which is Chanakya in Daily Life. So friends, uh, today onwards, uh, uh, we are actually looking at uh, Chanakya from a different perspective. That is, today's book is about application of Chanakya. Okay, so what is this whole book about? Okay, This book is very different. And I always say this, because all my books are different from each other. Uh, till now, all the five books that I spoke about were published by Jeco. I have worked with a lot of publishers. I've been very fortunate. Uh, and I'll be also talking about the publishers till now. Remember the five books that we did till now were all from Jeco. And this is a book from Rupa. You can see the symbol over here. There's a red dot over here. Yeah. So this is Rupa publication. And they're also very well known in India. They've been uh, in this particular distribution and publishing business for more than 60, 60, 70 years. And it's almost a third generation. So how did this book happen? So uh, uh, I've been very fortunate to work with them because Rupa also is a very well-known publisher. Some of you may be knowing um, great authors, right, from Abdul Kalam, sir. We have, uh, you know, Shashi Tharoor, we have Chetan Bhagat. And so many other well-known people you can go on Rupa's website. So I was approached by the editor uh, Rituji and of course dear Kapish. So Kapish actually uh, publishes a lot of books. And I've done many books with Rupa. Tomorrow also we'll be going to see one more book of Rupa. But right now I'm going to focus on this particular book. So when this book happened by the grace of God, I was already uh, a bestseller. You know that was the best part about it. Uh, there was always an expectation uh, that you know something different has to be done. So first two, three, four times you are doing trial and error, you become established. After getting established, again there is a problem. So when this first meeting that happened with uh, my publisher, with Rupa Group, uh, Rupa Books, they asked me, you know, why don't you write a book with Char on Chanakya with us? It's more than happy. But we brainstorm a lot and saying that, okay, what is that particular topic on which you want me to write? Because I'm not going to corporate Chanakya part two. I'm not going to write anything else which I've already written. They said, no problem. You have to be very calm. They said, you have to make it very simple, which is applicable. I said, okay, you tell me the topic, you tell me the theme, and the, top, the theme that finally got finalized was 
how to apply chanakya in life okay so that's the practical chanakya how you me and everyone in this particular 21st century can actually use chanakya principles in our daily life so uh, what i'm going to do like what we have been doing okay, uh, before that a unique cover page i hope everybody likes this uh, because it's got somebody in a very modern look you got a young uh, chanakya with the uh, earphone headphone then you can see him in t-shirt i would say check shirt not even t-shirt so it's more a modern outlook for chanakya he is not that typical uh, dhoti wala chanakya it's like you and me and you can see the technology part of it also all of us like to listen to music and many of them are using the headphones of you and for you know conference calls etc friends uh, this is a very unique cover and uh, you know if you have seen this particular book the the, the book stand out you know it's very very clear uh, the yellow color also stand out and it's also sold max numbers and it's another best seller book so let me just start reading with the introduction part of it the contents part of it okay so i want to just tell you that if you look at this particular book this book actually is divided into three parts the first is the introduction and the second is basically it is divided into three sections it's called personal life yeah it's called personal life the second section is called professional life and the third section is called family life i think all of us go through these particular three different roles from time to time so what are these roles first is personal life you know? it's i me myself your private time your private life when you work in an office there is a career there is a business so whatever you do you know your professional life and the third one is a family life so professional life is somewhere outside family life is somewhere inside but even in the family you have two roles personal and with others and every particular section has got many many chapters the first section which is personal life has got 23 chapters it's got 23 chapters second section which is called uh, professional life has got also 23 sections so totally 46 chapters so 23 23 46 chapters and the last one is family life and that put together we got 70 chapters in all yes so this book has got 70 chapters and it's very practical how you can apply it in your life what is interesting about this particular book uh, and you know, i think most of you must have understood my format of writing is that i write in capsules in short short chapters so that everybody can apply it and practice it so i don't like to write long chapters i don't like to use jargons so it is also like that so that simple and nicely everybody can actually benefit from this particular book so friends uh, i am going to actually start reading one one chapter of the three sections so it becomes easy for everyone so you know the first is personal life second is professional life and third is family life so i'll be doing a book reading and uh, let me start with the first section and first chapter the first section and the first chapter is called waking up so the first thing you know we are all lazy to get up even though everybody of us know the famous saying it says early to bed and early to rise makes a person healthy healthy and wise but when it comes to practicality everybody is actually waking up very different time zones i do understand to a great extent that all of us are having our own professional commitments you know some people work uh, on international uh, time standards suppose you are working with a company which has got an office in uk or us you know it's a different time zone altogether um, but generally i think uh, the discipline is what matters it is not just your working hours uh, but the reality is that always from a healthy uh, standpoint from uh, not only physical health but even from a mental health standpoint a good disciplined life is always good and always our rishis have told you know early is better and when you mean early it has to be at least before sunrise so i'm not saying everybody has to wake up at 3:30 or 4 o'clock but uh, you know at least to wake up and be ready before the world wakes up is what the principle is and today morning only i tweeted i don't know if you're following my tweeters if not you do that what should a person do when he gets up early in the morning so when a person gets early in the morning the first thing that he or she is supposed to do that's what we want to see in this particular chapter and today what we're going to do is look at the first section and first chapter and that's called waking up let me start <clears throat> has it ever occurred to you 
that the first thought of your day is the most important one has it ever occurred to you that the most important thing in the day is the first thought that you have good morning it is the way we greet our family members when we wake up good morning suprabhatam ram ji whatever it is so we always greet somebody and we wake up be it at school college or workplace we greet each other with this positive phrase so in the morning when we meet anybody first thing is good morning sir good morning madam good morning how are you so it's always a greeting which is good morning but what can one do to really make the morning good what can one do to make the morning good in the ancient tradition we have a method to divinize our thoughts so you know in the morning according to indian tradition indian culture we actually had to divinize our day make it very spiritual in nature how do we do that we're going to see that right now we start the day with a sense of gratitude we start the day with a sense of gratitude many traditions have specific prayers that should be chanted as soon as one wakes up while others encourage sitting quietly and meditating for some time before one goes about the daily routine so ours is not you know get up and uh, just rush uh, uh, and you know start getting ready sit quietly take the god's name chant some prayers meditate for some time whatever according to your tradition or your culture but the first thought in the morning has to be divine and it's a gratitude a feeling of thank you not everybody who sleeps wakes up right a lot of people who pass away in sleep also so if you have got up and you have life you should be thankful you should feel yourself lucky okay so many traditions have their own way while others encourage quiet sitting chanakya who wrote the artha shastra had some good tips on how to begin one's day you know what he suggested he the king he the king should awaken to the sound of musical instruments he the king should wake up to the sound of musical instruments it is coming in book number 1 chapter number 9 sutra number 21 so you can see the reference that it is a direct message from chanakya the first book of artha shastra focuses on the training that the king underwent it is called vidya samuddeshah the first section is called vidya samuddeshah that is training of a king in it he shares his knowledge on how to be a good leader chanakya also gives practical tips on how to execute one's leadership skills note that these tips can also be followed by those who are not leaders yeah so it is tips for leaders and also it is tip for followers but commoners like you and me also can benefit from this particular tips its beauty lies in fact its beauty the way chanakya advises lies in the fact that once we follow these tips we automatically start developing the leadership qualities in us so you may not be a leader you start following these leadership qualities you become a leader the first step to develop leadership skills is how we begin our day ah uh, the first thought the first thing makes you a leader or not a leader according to chanakya as stated above chanakya suggests that one should awaken to the sound of musical instruments this means that when a person wakes up listening to music it sets the mood right imagine waking up from a bad dream the whole day starts in a negative mode you feel drained with every passing minute but all that can be corrected just with the sound of musical instruments how do we practice this message by chanakya in our daily life here are some tips the first tip sleep well it is not just how you wake up but also the quality of your sleep that matters a good 7 to 8 hours of sleep is essential for an average person if one sleeps early and that has had 
an undisturbed sleep if a person had undisturbed sleep then waking up will be an easy task if it helps one feel energetic and rejuvenated to start the day so make sure you sleep on time and wake up on time alarm clock that's the second tip alarm clock there are two types of alarm clocks one can use for waking up the external alarm clock and the internal alarm clock most of us are aware of the external alarm clock which rings at a preset time but do we know about our internal alarm clock people who had who have control for their minds and use this alarm can wake up very easily and wake up very well they are so disciplined that they instruct their mind tomorrow morning i want to wake up at 5 am and you would be surprised no that they wake up exactly at 5 am without needing an external alarm clock so they actually have control over the mind this is telling the mind that you have to wake up at 5 am and without an alarm clock you are awake that's called the power of mind control this requires a little help bit of patience because you have to keep instructing the mind until and unless it listens so it requires practice it requires discipline of the mind you are required to do this again and again and again it's like training you know the training of a dog or a training of a person if you look at it, it takes continuous time it is saying anything to become an habit takes 21 days to keep doing it again and again and again and one day your mind will start listening to you try it for some time and you will eventually start waking up at the desired time so practice makes a man perfect so one day you want to wake up at 5 o'clock 6 o'clock whatever time you decide and suddenly next day if you don't wake up doesn't matter try it again try it again try it again you know my guru swami tejimal used to tell you know start small bit by bit the progress should not be very hectic so suppose you got a habit of waking up at 9 o'clock in the morning okay so today and uh, nowadays because of the lockout we don't know what to do after waking up so everybody is sleeping sleeping and you know, at 10 o'clock it became like a normal time let's say even during the normal times if you are waking up at 9 o'clock don't try to immediately get up at 5 o'clock what you will not really you know not corporate because it's a very sudden shift so make small changes let's say you have the habit of waking up at 7 o'clock wake up at least half an hour early wake up at 6:30 so if you're already waking up at 6 o'clock Wake up at five thirty. So you know, give the mind a chance to adjust. It's like a girl getting married, you know, and going to a new place. Give that girl a chance because a new place. So in the same way, the mind also requires some time. So don't be so cruel to the mind that it will overreact. Make your mind your friend. Go enjoy it, and then slowly it will start cooperating with you. And that's what we want ultimately, right? What we want is actually cooperation from the mind so that it becomes disciplined. the third tip music i think there's no person in the world who doesn't like music for those who use an external clock the alarm sound is crucial you know they tune their mind so much at the moment they listen to that particular music and so they wake up so the tune the nowadays most of us use the alarm clock on our mobile phones you know mobile phone itself has become alarm clocks now choose your alarm tone very carefully there are so many options ring tones and you can set up your own uh, music or whatever there are various ring tones to choose from choose something melodious for example an alarm tone that is inspired by nature like the call of the birds or the sound of the wind don't try to make it ta 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 you know people like to we go with let's say metal music oh my goodness it's so dangerous You're suddenly waking up with that kind of a sound not very much appreciated so it's important that we choose the kind of a music tuning with will be actually waking up in time a loud and heavy ringtone will ensure that you wake up but in a disturbed state 
and if there are others in the room they too will get disturbed because it's not about you your mother your uh, your, uh, your parents your grandparents you suddenly don't wake up cool quiet slowly because don't ever get up with a jerk ah. so in general so in general a loud ring tone will actually spoil everybody's day it has to be soft of course it has to be loud enough so don't make it so silent that you don't listen as chanakya said do wake up with the sound of music but the right music do wake up with the sound of music but with the right music some even start their day with devotional music and spiritual hymns and mantras in many cultures there is something about spirituality so if you look at the uh, community you will listen to the uh, sanskrit chants Uh, maybe you know most of the south indians especially in tamil nadu uh, wake up with ms subalakshmi's uh, uh, songs and lalit prasanna or vishnu sasanna people in north would probably wake up with tulsi uh, das dwai maharashtra there is a culture called as upali upali is actually waking up the child with lot of you know divine thoughts like how we have lullaby we also have wake up uh, songs and music if you look at you know the culture in punjab it's all about listen to guru so all these spiritual music and spiritual chants energizes your mind makes it very divine and last step is carry the mood it is not enough to just wake up in the right mood one should also carry on that cheerful mood all day long some people just wake up and afterwards you know gone lazy no 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 be positive and carry on the mood the whole day and you have to be the source of inspiration for everyone around you when you feel good about yourself very important when you feel good about yourself you should make others feel good about themselves so you should be an inspiration and make sure others also feel good by being in touch with you great greet others around you positive so when you wake up in the morning of course you have to be positive but also be warm and very nice with others around you as the old saying goes the best makeup on your face is a smile the best makeup on your face is a smile this will make sure that your good morning also becomes a good day your good morning also becomes a good day so don't just start with a good morning but your whole day should be good so that's the way you wake up in the morning so very practical tip of how to start your day as i told you there are three se- uh, sections we go to the next section For another chapter that is professional life. Now we saw how to get up in the morning. Now let us see how to go to the workplace early in the morning. It says going to the workplace. So you got up, you got ready. Now you are supposed to go to your workplace. The chapters in the previous section focus on how to apply chanak things in one person. You know that fourth section word. Here from this chapter onwards. we will learn how to apply chanakya's teaching in our professional lives that's what i explained to you and the whole changes remember we are now moving from the individual level to group dynamics so remember it was it's all about others also so in individual it becomes group dynamics part of this will obviously teach you how to deal with others as well so initially self control about yourself now it's also about others steve kovi one of my very famous uh, authors in the field of management used to tell very nicely your private life and your public life your private life and your public life so what you do with yourself is one uh, uh, part of you but how you deal with others is also an important part so slowly from personal life you are moving into professional life okay part of this will obviously teach you how to deal with others because your success at the workplace is inter Link to be the success of others at your workplace. So you cannot only succeed; you know, everybody has to succeed. So it's an interrelated thing. Many people believe in competition. You know, if he goes up, if he gets a promotion, what's going to happen to me? It's actually going to be the other way around. If all of us succeed. The company is doing well. We will get salaries. We will be promoted. So it's not about I, me, myself. It's all about we. We all together we will do it. So remember the concept of teamwork. T E A M together everyone achieves more together everyone achieves more so it's going to be team dynamics this is a major shift in thinking that you need to partake of that is from I to V from I to V 
me. Don't think about I, me, myself. Think about all of us together. So let us begin. So this is the first chapter in the second section. So the chapter number is twenty-four. Most of us work to make money. There is nothing wrong in that. But what is the purpose at your workplace? Do you feel inspired when you wake up every morning? You feel inspired, or oh, oh my goodness, I have to go to work. Do you say yes? I am looking forward to go to office today. Many people will say, do you get really inspired? I know. In fact, I know some people who work in inspiring workplaces. They say, "Are you asked to Saturday, Sunday? So boring. I don't like actually Saturday, Sunday. Why? Because I like the more the time that I spend in my office. Imagine what kind of an inspiring place that would be. Instead of a holiday, they actually want every day to be a working day. Okay, and therefore, are you working in an inspiring workplace? If yes, then know that this excitement will ensure you have a great life ahead. So you are lucky. You already have a great organization. You are already inspired, and you will have a great life ahead. Because choosing the right workplace is also equally important for your happiness. As we saw yesterday, that most of us spend maximum of our time in offices. So it's a very important choice that you make. Chanakya says, one should awaken and ponder. Oh, work to be done, and ponder over the work to be done. He should sit in consultation with counselors, dispatch secret agents, and then he should proceed to the assembly hall. Book number one, chapter number nineteen, sutra number twenty-one to twenty-four. This is how a day should begin. Let me explain that. Chanakya has paved the way to prepare you for the day ahead. One shouldn't just get up and rush to work. You will just get up. Oh, it's ten o'clock, and then you just even take a bath properly and dress up and just go. Never do that. The morning offers us a window to accomplish tasks in a manner that no other time of the day does. So, do the most important things in the morning itself. Everybody goes to office late, and then there is a lot of delay. And half of the day is already gone. Then twelve o'clock onwards you start, and then the whole thing goes on that you sit late back in office. Not a good habit. The most productive hours in office is actually the morning hours. I know of a chairman of a company. The office timing was nine o'clock, but he used to come at eight thirty. And eight thirty to nine o'clock, he used to do all the planning. And nine o'clock onwards, sharp productivity. The first step is to plan your day. So as soon as you wake up, after your prayers. Ponder over the work to be done during the day. As soon as you wake up, do your prayers. Think, आज क्या क्या करना है? What is the priorities of my day? It is not possible to always complete everything in the morning. Yeah, so there are twenty things to be done. You can't fit everything in the morning two hours. It's not possible. There are things still left undone from the previous day also. You know, some of the things of the last day is left over. New things get added up today, as well as new things that have uh, that have to be worked on today. So learn to prioritize. So you got twenty things to do. So to do, which is important first. Plan out that. Write down the task and then write down one, two, three, which is more important. So when you look at that, you say probably I have to do this thing first. Suppose for example your boss wants something from you urgently. You can't tell that you know yesterday's job is pending. So therefore I will give you tomorrow. No, no, no. That is boss job. That's a first priority. So even if you already have a priority, sometimes the priority changes. So you have to understand. The work in the terms of writing a to-do list, but also prioritizing and sequencing. You should know what to do when. Chanakya says that the king has to sit in a consultation with his counselors. You know, Raja has got a mantri parishad. He has to sit with him and counsel with them. The king had the privilege of having on his call a group of experts who would report to him early in the morning. You know, everybody doesn't come early, but he's a raja. So you just call and they would come. It is said that Abdul Kalam, Doctor A P J Abdul Kalam, actually used to have his meetings at three o'clock in the morning. One person was told to come at three o'clock, so he went at three o'clock. And then those people said, "You are very late. You know, we are waiting for you." So I am on time. I am. Uh, no, no, no. It's three p.m. Actually, you are supposed to come at three a.m. So there are people like that. The rajas can actually afford to call people at any particular time. So that is the advantage of being a late. So. The, this was so that before the day began, he was well informed about the happenings around the king. He used to call everybody in the night also. According to Artha Shastra, the king is supposed to wake up at one thirty in the night. Think about this. He used to gather information before the other people in the kingdom wake up. He should also send secret spies to gather information 
in the morning so that he would get the necessary inputs for his required work during the day he has to get up early morning send messages get messages so during those uh, days there was no newspaper or broadcasting mechanism or no whatsapp groups you know so today any time we want we can get information But during those days he had to send spies so to gather information be well prepared be very very well informed to run that particular kingdom he could also send secret spies to gather information in the morning so that he would get necessary inputs for his required work during the day so how do we apply this in our daily work that is all fine you know it's all chanakya's days but aaj ke zamane mein kaise kare you know today is a era of technology today is a very different generation how does it apply to us this particular generation here it is how see as i told you this book is very practical it will tell you not only chanakya's theories but how do we apply it in our lives so remember it's your professional life first thing be informed it is very important to be aware of what is happening around you it is very important to understand what is happening around you the best way for you to stay up to date on the latest news is the newspaper i know many of you have this habit of browsing through a lot of whatsapp messages or you know online newspapers i'm not against it but still the physical news read every day it's a very different way of reading reading a e version of it you know now it is long many of them not get to deliver newspapers are so important the touch and feel you know even now i would still suggest that people should read physical book the the fingers and your brain has got a direct connection so you know when you touch the newspapers every morning on the door bed there is a newspaper today we feel very bad because of the corona virus problem that we are not getting newspaper delivery of course they come sometimes they don't come the newspaper industry is trying very hard but let me tell you read a newspaper every day that's a very good habit to actually get yourself way to get this actually physical newspapers because there is editorial team they cannot just write fake messages it has to be verified you know anybody can post fake messages but the newspaper industry has to make sure it is authentic and it actually updated so that's the power of the newspaper industry so even though there could be different versions of newspapers but at least there is an authenticity it's a system there is an organization that does checks and balances so when you enter your workplace you can confidently participate in group discussions and sound very well informed so you read something and you have a meeting you say hey, you know what is happening here and you know what is happening there they say oh this guy is very well informed but if you know uh, the uh, indian uh, public services like ias indian administrative service or ips in the training itself they train to actually read at least 5 to 10 newspapers every day yes that's a part of the duty in fact uh, if they are not reading a newspaper they will not have no in fact many of the strategies policemen get from actually reading newspapers the newspapers is not only the front page news but newspapers also contain a lot of small small information and you should know how to dissect all these things the newspaper reading is actually a good habit in the very first day of the mo- part of the morning especially during working days when you are going to offices second important thing is delegate okay when you have multiple things to be done the first and the foremost thing is to decide who is going to do what a lot of people like to do all the work themselves no 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 that is not a good leadership so you should know how to delegate work to your people also so don't delegate at 4 o'clock in the evening and then wait for that person poor person for him or her to wait till 9 o'clock in the night if you can actually delegate work to somebody early morning so you reach office at 9 o'clock and you plan your day by 9 30 10 o'clock you already delegated that person will actually give it to you at some minor correction by 4 o'clock you are done but imagine if you start delegating your work at 4 o'clock and the work will come at 6 o'clock that person will already be frustrated uh, his or her energy will all gone first thing in the morning you don't need to accomplish all of the task that is also very important after delegating don't then everything will be done that day itself some can be taken care of by juniors or as well some of them you have to do some of them can be done by others so that's thinking and delegating don't just delegate for the sake of showing your power delegate after understanding who can do what there's a formula called as right person for the right job i'll repeat it right person for the right job it is strategy let's assume you need an input from a junior for a board meeting 
let's assume you require an input from a junior for a board meeting that you're going to have at noon. As soon as you start your work, call in a subordinate and delegate that work to him or her. Do this before 10 a.m. That's exactly what I explained. So that he has got enough time to research and find the inputs. Make sure to let him know he did well. So after he has given the input, at least say, good, thank you so much. The input is very much important. A lot of people gather information but never give credits. So if you are making a presentation based on your junior's input, please tell them, thank you so much. If you look at movies also, at the end of it, there are credit. You know, it is not just about the heroes and the heroines, but also small, small, the spot boy, the, even the person who bought and gave the tea or served the food. The caterer's name is also there in the credits of the movie. So when you prepare something after you delegate, please thank them also for doing the work and giving you input. Finally, the key to a successful day is not to pack too many activities in one day. Finally, the key to success is not doing too much in one particular day. Remember to keep an hour free. So if you plan for eight hours a day in a workplace, only plan for seven hours. One hour should be uh, extra. Unexpected things may come up and you will still want to be in a position to accommodate them in your daily schedule. Yes. So don't think that it's only uh, that what you planned will happen. This unexpected thing and sometimes things that unexpected is you know why? Because it actually helps you to sorry, it actually helps you to understand uh, that unexpected things also are opportunities. Unexpected things are also opportunities. Therefore, in India, we have something called as Atiti Devo Bhava. Repeat that Atiti. The one person who comes without Atiti means timing, but Atiti means without timing. So opportunities can come in. But you say, I'm very busy. No, 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 no. There is a same opportunity comes either you're sleeping inside or you're gone out somewhere. So, plan for unexpected thing also. Make sure uh, that you plan for unexpected things. Okay. And finally, most importantly, if there is some unfinished work, uh, despite your best efforts, it may so happen, you know, at the end of it, there is some unfinished work. Remember that there is a tomorrow. Don't try to pack in everything today, today, today. You will become burnt out. You will become workaholic. Because it's essential that you start your day just as you did. You end it with a smile. Just how you began your day with a smile. End your day with a smile. If you go back home, you should also feel fresh. Okay? Not only you should feel fresh, you also should feel fresh. So that when you go home, everybody says, wow, he's available for family time. I know so many people who start office in time and also end their offices in time. They live by 6 o'clock. They are home by 6 7 and 7 o'clock. Don't drag yourself. Therefore comes the third section. That is family. Because after personal, after professional, you have to also give time for your family. I am going to read one more chapter on the third section that is called family. And I am going to read the first of the first, I mean, third section, chapter number 47 comes in page 187. Duties of a householder. Duties of a householder. There it is. So, now how do we look at duties of a householder? So far, we have learned how to apply Tarnakya's wisdom in our personal and professional lives in part one and part two, respectively. Now, we come to the third part applying Tarnakya's wisdom in family life. Our lives are incomplete without our families, especially in India, where the culture itself promotes a strong bond within the family, plays highest importance to striking uh, importance to striking one's roots. Sorry, sticking to one's roots. You know, for us, a family is everything. During the family system, our large extended family of grandparents, our joint family system. Our large extended family of grandparents, uncles and aunts also are part of a personal family. So this all becomes part of our families. So success in personal and professional life does not automatically translate to being a successful person. Remember, just because you are successful as a professional can make you a successful person. Just because you are successful professionally doesn't mean that you are a successful person. 
just because you are a successful person professionally doesn't guarantee that you are a successful person in life because automatically we have to understand family also needs to be managed we call totally successful person also requires one to be successful in the family the third and most important dimension of life professional and family so let us begin this section with a look at the duties of a householder the duties of householder or grahastha has only been defined in the vedas the vedic culture defines it vedas are the oldest books available to mankind a culture is defined by these great texts to a great degree chanakya also takes his inspiration of setting up an ideal kingdom and society based on the vedic system in the arthashastra he says the duties of a householder are earning his living in accordance with his own special duty marrying into the families of the same uh, community but not of the same gotra approaching the wife during the right time worship of gods menes and gets making gifts to dependents and eating what is left over after others have eaten yeah don't just be a bhukar as they say only i me myself you always eat after you have fed everybody else we will now be looking at each of these particular duties of a family person for the next few chapters the whole section is about family duties note that the duties are relevant to both women and men so both genders have to understand their own duties it is important to understand that a family will not be complete without the compatibility of both husband and the wife and the children and the parents so finally it is the mutual respect between the family members that will make for a successful family let us look at the first aspect duties of a householder are earning in accordance with his own special duty the first and the foremost duty of a householder is to earn a living for his family this is very practical advice given by chanakya earning the bread and the butter for one's own family member is essential dunia bhar ko dekho lekin uske pehle apne parivar ko dekho it's very important to know about your own family members the children the elders and in a large sense the society depends on the earning members dhanyo grahastha ashrama as it is and without a culture we are all a vulture okay so it should be that so along with the earning money for the family you will find true happiness also in your profession so make sure that you have a profession which makes you happy so with that friends today we are going to take up some of these questions that you have sent to us thank you for the wonderful questions that you have been sending us again you know day after day the number of questions is only rising you look at it the number of questions that you are asking is only increasing day by day so let us start with the first question today we got somebody with the name sijimon sijimon has got a interesting question he says what is r and d r and d means research and development what should be the r and d to be done during quarantine times everybody is sitting over here see r and d doesn't mean only doing research in a laboratory or a library you can actually sit with your computers you can sit with your google and do some research some reading you know r and d is a mindset it is the kind of a inquisitiveness to know more and more so we need to do r and d from time to time but how do you do that he says let me shiji mon says that i am in 10th standard so what should i do i want to study chanakya and arthashastra and i also want to get good marks so three things how should i do r and d i have already told start doing reading researching with whatever available resources inside the house now i am in 10th standard then how do i study how to get good marks the best way is practice 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 abhyasa but also under a good teacher be friendly with your teacher be friendly with your friends very important you know see people who are focused on studies also need to be good human beings so if you are doing regular practice helping each other and also Uh, you know gathering help from each other you will definitely get good marks but a studious student is also or rather should be a good human being so take help from others and be studious you will definitely get good marks with the right practice and the right guidance 
Now, Chanakya and Arthashastra I want to study. The first thing I would suggest is that please purchase the books. Kautilya, Arthashastra and Chanakya Niti. They are all available. You can go to the internet and find out. Even if it is not there, if you want to make it simple, all my books are there. So these are the kind of sessions that we are doing on books. Nothing but reading is very important and lifelong uh, you should search for a guru. A guru who will tell you how to study those particular scriptures. So uh, it should be a commitment that you do, that you study the Arthashastra, Shastra, but please purchase the books and take the guidance of teachers. Now we have Ketul Akhani. That is the next question coming. Tell me something about the gambling business. Okay, that's quite interesting. Tell me something about the gambling business. Now, gambling is a good business from the government standpoint, but very bad from a family standpoint. Yeah, very important because yeah, you know government can collect a lot of taxes. In fact, gambling can turn around an economy because people go there and it's very easy to fall into the into the trap of gambling. In fact, Chanakya had a particular you know tax structures for uh, betting, gambling, but. Gambling is a double-edged sword. You can make money, but if you slip, you can become very dangerous also. So those people who are thinking of gambling, please, please be very careful about it. Let me also tell you there is a difference between gambling and taking calculated risk. There is a difference between gambling and taking calculated risk. Even in business, they say I have to gamble. No, business is not a gamble. It's a calculated risk. If you just gamble without thinking, it's dangerous. As I told you, in many countries across the globe, there are even gambling companies, betting companies, which are listed on the stock market. Yes, you will be surprised. But as a nation, right from the Mahabharata days, we have seen, you know, if you don't know how to come out of the gamble, it actually creates a problem. So it's interesting to know that you have to be very careful about gambling. And tradition says that, you know, Shani Maha Pe Baita Hai. So, Shani Devata, of course, all Devatas are good, all planets are good, but you have to be very careful. Yudhishthira also fell in that trap. And you don't know, the price of gambling can be very high. So keep a distance and be very careful. But from a government standpoint, Chanakya says it's good. Tax milta hai, but avoid it. Okay. The next question that we are going to take up is from Nutan. Uh, Nutan Fakre. Uh, so, Nutan has a question. How to write a book? How to complete writing a book? Okay. Oh, I'm glad that all of you have started thinking about writing a book. In fact, that is one of my dreams. I always say this, you know, that please write a book, please write a book, please write a book. I also do uh, writing workshops. Yeah. yeah, we do these workshops very regularly. How to write a book and make it a, uh, I mean a bestseller. It's not about writing a book, but a book also should be successful. So please send us your details. We will contact you when the next workshop is happening. And in our office, we also have Kartika who collates everything. We'll make sure we uh, will tell you about these upcoming workshops. Other interesting thing is that I've also written a book. It is called How to Write a Book and Make It a Bestseller that we will see very soon. And we'll be actually seeing it uh, uh, about the tips about how to write a book, how to approach a publisher, how to market the book, how to do book launches. All this will be available very soon in the next forthcoming session. So keep your eyes and ears open. So the book, How to Write a Book and Make it a Bestseller, will also be uh, taken in this particular series, 14 days, 14 books of Radha Krishna Pillai. And we look forward for that. Okay, now there are some more questions uh, that I will uh, take up. And these are the leftover questions. You know, I'll try and, as I told you, the 14 days, answer every particular question. But some of them we could not cover yesterday. This is from Cups Vyas. The question is, what are Chanakya's thoughts on women? Ah, the, one of the most controversial topic. In fact, uh, uh, one of the very Bollywood veteran, uh, her name is Smita Jaikar. Okay, some of you must have heard about it. You can Google about her. She's got a channel. And the channel is uh, about spirituality. And Smita Ji interviewed me. And the topic was saying Chanakya on women. You can go to Google and uh, or YouTube and see. Chanakya and woman, Smita Jaikar with Radha Krishna Pillai, and a lot of thoughts. Uh, just to quickly tell you one or two points, Chanakya was very positive about women. He believed in woman empowerment, and he believed that women uh, should be participative in decision making, both at the family level as well as at the level of the kingdom. So uh, there are so many misunderstandings about him. If you study the Arthashastra, you will come to know 
that women during chanakya's times were very very empowered so chanakya's thoughts on women their partners in the good things that we do and of course it starts with the mother and of course the rajamata so many powerful women are there in the chanakya's books and characters so please uh, 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 make sure that you go through that particular video also uh, we got somebody called deep sari uh, deep sari has got a question which is very interesting it says i am little confused about anvikshiki ah please explain anvikshiki is called as the prathama vidya according to chanakya prathama vidya and first knowledge of a king it comes in the kautilya artha shastra the first chapter of artha shastra is called as anvikshiki sthapana anvikshiki sthapana shastra means establishing and what is anvikshiki actually means philosophy r p kangle one of the great scholars translated as philosophy tattvagyan but my translation has been strategic thinking how to think correctly anvikshiki is a combination of sankhya yoga and lokayata sankhya yoga and lokayata i will be explaining that again in the forthcoming session because we got one more book called as inside chanakya's mind anvikshiki and the art of thinking i'll repeat it i got another book which i have written on the same topic inside chanakya's mind anvikshiki and the art of thinking so i'll explain it in detail but in simple line anvikshiki is the art of thinking uh, fortunately i uh, you know my my daughter's name is also anvikshiki because draupadi has been referred as anvikshiki in the mahabharat my son's name also is arjun and thanks to the family of all these people that we have i'll explain about anvikshiki a little bit later during the next sessions but the book is available called inside chanakya's mind you can read in detail about that Uh, we got a question from charu charu thank you so much for this question everything is easy and clear in mind sochne ke time mein sab kuch easy lagta hai sab kuch clear lagta hai but put in practice we require a lot of energy and practice that's true you know just talking about it is very easy but when it comes to doing it it becomes so difficult that's true very easy, easy practice is uh, difficult but only by practice you can achieve success winners don't just talk they do okay it's important that we become winners in life so practice is going to be difficult but there's a saying in the indian army the more you sweat during peace times the less you bleed during war times in the armed forces army navy air force you see they always continuously planning preparing practicing the more you plan the more you sweat during peace times the less you bleed during war times so if you want to make it very easy the application practice more that is chanakya suggestion the fourth question that so uh, other the sixth question that i am going to take today is from rajesh shekhar that is the name that's come in where can we find uh, chanakya speaks movie oh yeah that's the movie that i mentioned about where can we speak chanakya speaks movie go to www.chanakyaspeaks.in or you can just go to youtube and type chanakyaspeaks.in and you will find about it Uh, and we'll also try and send you some links. So Chanakya Speaks. In you'll find everything. Tomorrow will be Chanakya in the classroom. Yes, very interesting book. Chanakya in the classroom for teachers and students. So when I say teachers, also parents are teachers. I have one request from all of you. I hope all of you will uh, listen to me on this particular small request. This one request. Make sure that there's one more participant, maybe a family member or a friend who also comes and joins us from tomorrow. I'll repeat it. please give me a promise on that i'll tell you the reason why it is not about popularity i'll tell you why after this whole session you can discuss with him or give you a maybe a teacher also so i very request that each one of you please pass it on but watch it together so that you get benefited so with that this is radha krishnan pillai signing off today on 14 days 14 books of chanakya see you tomorrow